Today on Garden Fork, learn how to make hard cider. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to Garden Fork. Today I'm going to show you how to make hard cider. It's easy, you can do it, I can do it. All right? All right. You can make hard cider out of regular cider that you buy in the store. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, in the olden days, how they would make hard cider is kind of hit or miss. You would take cider, throw it in a barrel, and let the wild yeast that are present uh, cultivate the sugars that are in your cider, convert the alcohol, and then maybe they would have a drinkable hard cider. All hard cider you're going to buy in a store has been treated in some way with a UV uh, system or pasteurization system to kill the microorganisms that are present in cider. So it's kind of like a sterile cider. Cider that you get from an orchard here, you know, you just went there with your jug and they filled it up from their cider press, has a lot of wild organisms present in it. And you could possibly make a tasty hard cider from that. In other words, the, there's yeasts that are present on the skin of the apples. That goes into here, the yeast blooms, boom, you have cider. Maybe, maybe not. So what I want to show you here is how to use either orchard cider or store-bought cider to make hard cider. First thing, think about a container. You could do small batches of cider, you can do big batches. This right here is a five gallon plastic carboy. Uh, our neighbor was throwing a bunch out, so we grabbed that. You can get a little stopper and an adapter to put an airlock on, and you've got a fermenter. You can also ferment in small batches. This is a beer growler that we had, and we put some cider in here with a stopper and some yeast, and this is a small batch. This is from our neighbor Priscilla, she has the uh, cider press we did a DIY cider press video about. The link is below here and at the end of the show. And this is just bubbling away just great. When you're going to start a cider, if you're wanting to use two quarts of cider, you should double the volume to get a jug. So this is a one gallon jug and we're going to use a half gallon of cider, okay? The reason we do that is when you add the cider in here and the yeast, it foams like crazy. It's just like... If you just have a half gallon of cider and a half gallon container, I'll show you what happens. So if you just put a gallon of cider in a gallon jug, you see what happens. It foams way too much, it gets stuck in the airlock, and that's a bad thing because it can wild yeast could get into the airlock and then get into your, your cider and it would just go bad. If you're going to be using cider that you pressed yourself or that's been freshly pressed in an orchard, you're going to need to kill the wild yeast in here. Some people say to boil the cider. I think that clouds the cider too much, so I use what are called Campton tablets. It's sodium bisulfite, I believe. Uh, I use one tablet per gallon crushed, mixed in here, shake it up, let it sit 24 hours, and that'll kill the wild yeast. And it won't be cloudy? No. The heating, I think the heating causes cloudiness, and the sulfite does not create cloudiness. Where do you get those? Uh, at the home brew store. By the way, if you have a beer homebrew kit, you're all set. You can make hard cider. Everything needs to be sanitized. You can buy sanitizer, or you can use a little bit of bleach and a couple of quarts of water. It does the same thing. Bleach works, but if you splash it on your clothes, you got white dots on your clothes. So learn from me. I thought the white dots on your clothes were paint. Well, sometimes. Sometimes they're bleach I spilled on myself. <laughs> but I have here, uh, it's handy just to have a little bit of a sanitizing solution nearby. When you're doing fermenting, you can dip your hands in it or di uh, dip stuff in it. Clean is good. Your fermenting jug, be it a five gallon one or a one gallon or whatever, needs to be sanitized. So you put your sanitizing solution in here, swish it around and rinse it out really well. Same thing with your stopper and your airlock. All of this is sanitized and your hands are clean. Very important. Okay. If you're using wild cider, you've killed the wild yeast. If you're using pasteurized cider, you don't have that problem. This one's been UV uh, done. What's it called? Uh, UV treated. treated. Ultraviolet light kills a lot of things. Look at the sun. So we're ready. We're going to put our cider into our fermenter. Remember, half gallon of cider gets a gallon fermenter. Okay. This has been sanitized, sanitized funnel. And we go in. Yeast for your cider. Big question. This is powdered yeast. This is a liquid yeast. It's really kind of the, you know, use what you got or what you like to use. I prefer liquid yeast, but this time 
I'm going to use the powdered yeast. I want to see what happens. This is much less expensive than this. Uh, this stores easily. You can just keep some of this in your fridge. It's kind of like uh, bread dough yeast, you know, keep it for a while. So I keep all this stuff in the refrigerator. If you're going to use a liquid one, there's usually a little protein pack in here. You smash it and it balloons out. So I proofed the yeast. If you've done bread baking, you know what I mean here. Uh, warm water and the package of yeast and let it sit for 15 minutes. It smells like bread yeast, but it's bubbling away in there. What does that mean that it's bubbling away? Uh, the yeast has been activated with warm water. It's ready to go. It's ready to make you hard cider. <laughs> Yay. All right, this has been sanitized. This is sanitized, the jug is sanitized. This goes in. Take a cap or your clean hand. You want to mix the yeast into your cider and you're also aerating the cider as well. That's probably hard to do with that taller jug. This is more of a wrestling match, but you can do it, okay? <laughs> Our airlock goes on, which has been sanitized once again. And now you're ready to let this ferment. Read the instructions on your yeast package. It'll say what temperature uh, range is best for its fermentation. Once the bubbling starts and you get bubbles coming out of here, move it to a cooler place. Uh, a low, long and slow cider yeast ferment is best. Um, I've done them at warmer temperatures. It doesn't really work as well. And I've read and found that keeping it in a cool place in your basement, a dark place, by the way, you don't want sunlight hitting this. It just bubbles, bubbles. Well, what's happening here is the yeast is eating the sugars in here and releasing alcohol and carbon dioxide. So what the airlock does is it lets the carbon dioxide out and it doesn't let anything back in. That's key. Because there's wild yeasts and other organisms that want to eat your cider and make it <laughs> maybe vinegar or something worse. <laughs> so the airlock keeps letting the carbon dioxide out, the bad stuff from going in. So here we are after one week of our half gallon store-bought cider in a gallon container. You can see here there's kind of a foamy line here, that's from all the fermentation, then our cider, and then a bunch of sediment at the bottom. So after a week we want to rack this or pour this or siphon this into a half gallon container because this is a half gallon of cider and we want to eliminate this big air space here for the rest of the fermentation. Pretty cool, huh? So one gallon container with our half gallon of cider initial fermentation, we're going to move into a half gallon container with an airlock again. So when is your cider become hard cider? When is it ready to drink? When the fermentation has stopped for three days, in other words, you're in your fermenter and you're watching the airlock and it stops bubbling for three days straight, you know that your fermentation is over and you're ready for bottling. Now you can get real geek out about this. You can do something called back sugaring. You can rack it to a secondary fermenter, but I'm talking about basic cider here, all right? I don't know what any of those other things mean. Yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> but we're ready for bottling then. When you see no more activity, you're ready for bottling, okay? We have a whole video about how to bottle your cider or your beer. It's, it's kind of a process. I think it needed its own video. It's kind of fun though. Yeah, it's great. You really do need two or three people to do it. There's a link down here and at the end of the show, for our how to bottle cider and beer. But what the second, the bottling actually allows a second smaller fermentation. So you can sip the cider when it's done bubbling. It's, that's not going to be the final flavor though. Uh, and we found that the longer they're in the bottle, a lot of times it really affects the flavor. It improves. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> If you have any questions or comments, ideas and suggestions for us, you leave them in the comments below. I'd really like to hear about that. And if you like what we're seeing here, this subscribe button right here. I can't talk as I subscribe. We put out shows like this every week. If you'd like to get that, hit the subscribe button right there. It'd be great to hear from you guys. Eric at gardenfork.tv is my email address. Sign up for our email newsletter. There's a link below here as well. And go out and do cool stuff. Come back and tell me about it, right? So make it a great day. I'll see you later.
Thank you.